In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In today's epistle, the Apostle admonishes the Romans, saying, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again in fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption of sons, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. This spirit of adoption of which St. Paul speak, speaks is found perfectly in those who are living members of the Church, that is to say, in those who are supernaturally united to God, not only by faith, but also by sanctifying grace. It is indeed sanctifying grace, to use the words of the Apostle St. John, it is by it that, quote, the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called and should be the sons of God. It is this habitual grace which allows us to address God not merely as Lord or Creator or Master, but as Father. And this in a proper sense, because grace makes us partakers, as St. Peter says, by adoption, of the divine nature, of that divine nature of our own Heavenly Father. Jesus Christ, our Head, is the natural Son of the Father, with whom he has the very same nature and substance as we will confess just in a minute in the Creed. We, on the other hand, are sons of the Father by adoption. Now, through this adoption, we have in the sense explained, the same Father as Jesus Christ. And therefore, St. Paul says that Christ is, quote, the firstborn among, amongst many brethren, and, quote, that he is not ashamed to call us, to call us brethren. <clears throat> Now, besides that, in the state, in every soul in the state of grace, indwells the Holy Ghost himself, who endows this soul with his seven gifts. Now, one of these seven gifts is the gift of piety, which makes the soul not merely believe in, but experience in a sweet manner that of which St. Paul speaks today. You have received the spirit of adoptions of sons, whereby we, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. <clears throat> now let's talk a little about this gift of piety. What is the gift of piety? It is a supernatural habit infused with sanctifying grace into our soul, which arouses in the will, through the motion of the Holy Ghost, a filial love for God, considered as a father, and a sentiment of brotherhood for men, inasmuch as they either actually are, or at least are called to be the sons of God. <laughs> I said that this gift is a supernatural habit. What does that mean? Habit here means something that is had and that is not easily lost. It is something that we possess with some firmness. And this is opposed, for example, to an inspiration, which comes and even though we receive it, ordinarily goes away quickly. It is not so with the gifts. We retain them in the soul for as long as we are in the state of grace. 
Now, what is the thing proper of this particular gift? This is the gift by which this gift perfects, excuse me, this gift perfects the virtue of religion. The virtue of religion makes us venerate God as creator of everything that exists. But these gifts make us, gives us the connaturality to see God not merely as creator, but as a father who has engendered us in the spiritual life by giving us a participation in his own divine nature. In this sense, God is truly our Father, and the worship which we give him as Father through the gift of piety is more noble and more excellent even than that, than that which we give him by virtue of religion. <coughs> now, this gift of piety perfects all the virtues related to justice but especially, as I just said, religion and piety, the virtue of piety. By making us fulfill all of the duties which these virtues demand, but with ease and pleasure or delectation. Think, for example, of what a difference there is in how one worships or praise to God only under the impulse of the virtue of religion, considering him only in as much as he is our creator and Lord. Consider the difference from this and worshiping or praying under the motion of the gift of piety, as the saints did, which made them see God as their most loving father. What a difference in the manner. <coughs> the duty of worship and prayer in the saints who were under the motion of this gift was easy and delightful, and hence they fulfilled it without effort. They wondered how can they pray so long? How could they? Well, because they enjoyed it. It was easy for them. Now, this gift inspires in us an entirely filial affection toward God. And consequently, it makes us see in, in men, not strangers, non-desperate people, or even worse, rivals, but brothers, that is, children of our common father. The gift of piety makes us say more profoundly, more deeply, both for ourselves and for others, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, etc. Our Father. We desire that the kingdom of God may take more profound possession of us and of our brethren. And these desires brings to our souls a great spiritual meekness which radiates on our neighbor. And that's what we see in the saints. There are other effects of this gift. I will mention only a few. By being intimately penetrated with this sentiment of its adopted divine filiation, the soul under this gift abandons itself calmly and confidently to the Heavenly Father. It is not worried with cares, and nothing is capable of disturbing its peace. It is not worried about health or sickness, a long life or a short one, consolations or aridity, persecution or praise. It is rather submissive always to the will of God, its Father, and seeks only to glorify Him with all its powers. Mm -hmm. 
The gift of piety also perfects and intensifies the soul's filial love for the Blessed Virgin. And we saw that particularly in the life of today's saint, Saint Bonaventure, we're going to speak a little about him at the end, but he was remarkable for his tender devotion to the Blessed Virgin. He saw in her his mother, and so it should be with us. The soul also loves the angels and the saints whom, it whom the soul considers as brothers who are now enjoying the continual presence of God in heaven, but whom the soul hopes firmly to meet soon. They are the family in a supernatural sense. The soul also has a tender affection for the souls in purgatory. This it sees as the suffering members of this family. It looks also upon all superiors as if, it, as if they were fathers and endeavors to obey them with filial joy. It has a deep veneration for sacred scripture and reads the revealed word of God as a, as a letter sent from heaven by the heavenly Father. Now, how can we dispose ourselves for the actuation of this gift of piety? I say dispose because it is only the Holy Ghost who can actuate it. But we can do in our part, the only thing we can do in our part is to dispose ourselves, to do certain things that will invite, so to speak, the action of the Holy Ghost. And what are those things? I will name only a few. The first is to cultivate the spirit of adopted sons of God, of which we just spoke. <laughs> we should try always to be before God as a child before its loving parent. We should constantly beg for the spirit of adoption, and we should endeavor to do all things for the love of God, not merely for fear, or for the reward, or for the punishment, to avoid the punishment, but for love, for love for our Father. The second is to cultivate the spirit of fraternal charity. We saw how this is a secondary effect of this gift. And therefore, we should make an effort to treat our neighbors as true brothers in God. <clears throat> If we do so, we will attract the gaze of God, our Heavenly Father, since He is delighted to see that we try to cultivate unity in His Son and for His love. Remember, our Lord Himself said that we should be known to be His disciples by the love which we bear one another. Now, a third thing to cultivate the spirit of complete abandonment to God. If God is our Heavenly Father and our loving Father, then why should not we trust Him? If we know He is omnipotent. He is omnipotent, He is infinitely good, and He loves and cares for us. Therefore, we should have trust in His providence. We should not worry about things. We should do all we can which is usually very little, but is in our hand, almost nothing. We should do the little we can, and the great things we cannot, which are most of them, we leave to God our Father. He will take care of us, as the psalmist say, says. To conclude, today we celebrate Saint Bonaventure. He was a great saint, and he had all the virtues to an eminent degree. But providentially, he was very remarkable in a special manner for his extraordinary piety. He is in fact called the Seraphic Doctor. Why? Because his writings are full of the unction of piety. One reads them 
and one can tell, like a perfume that comes, something supernatural, one can tell from the ancient the love of God that must have burned in his heart. Um, and that's why it is called seraphic, because the seraphim, which are the highest choir of, choir of angels, are the ones that love the God most ardently. So how did our saint attain to this admirable spirit of piety which we seek? How can we obtain a share of it and preserve it? Let us hear the Holy Doctor himself, and with that we will conclude. He writes, Christ, Christ's death on the cross should live in our thoughts and imagination. For frequent thought on the passion of Christ keeps aflame and brings to intense heat the fires of earnest piety. <clears throat> we must picture to the eyes of our heart Christ dying on the cross. If we would prevent the fires of devotion within us, burning themselves out. A pertinent quotation bears this out. Quote, The fire on my altar, said the Lord in Leviticus, shall always burn, and the priest shall feed it, putting wood on it every day. Leviticus chapter 6. The saint continues, let me explain. The altar of God is your heart. On the altar of your heart, the fire of intense heat must burn constantly. You must feed the fire each day with the wood of the cross and the remembrance of the passion of Christ. Isaiah the prophet, continues the doctor, preaches a similar truth. Quote, You shall draw waters with the joy out of the Savior's fountains. In other words, if the grace of tears, the tears of thanksgiving, the tears of fervent piety are sought, such tears must be drawn from the Savior's fountain that is, from the five, five wounds of Christ. Let us ask the Holy Doctor, St. Bonaventure, to intercede for us today and obtain for us from God by his merits to be truly imbued with the spirit of adoption and of piety, so that we can obtain from God his special love and protection in this life and to be joint co heirs, joint or co heirs with Christ hereafter. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat>